Hello, I'm Noah Bradley, and today I want to talk to you about my AI sketching process. Uh, I've been using some of the new AI art generating programs uh, lately and have been using them for ideation and sketching and stuff like that, and I think they're absolutely amazing. Uh, we just recorded a podcast uh, on Creators Chat talking all about our experiences and thoughts on AI and all that sort of stuff. So if you're more interested in just kind of a general idea of what we've experienced with AI art, uh, go ahead and check that out. I'll link it below. But um, if you're interested in seeing how I am approaching these sketches and what sort of process I'm doing uh, and some of my thought process behind doing them, as well as a few just nitty gritty tips and tricks on how to make them look a little bit better. Um, yeah, that's what this video is here for. So um, we're gonna go through actually 12 sketches that I did. Um, I have six that start with um, a mid journey image and then six that started with a disco diffusion. And so we'll go through all those and I won't talk too much about in particular images and stuff because there's not that much to discuss. It's mostly just me sketching, but it'll give you something interesting to watch. And then I'll talk about some of the more general ideas uh, about stuff that I'm doing and uh, stuff I would recommend if you're interested in uh, trying some of this AI sketching. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. All right, the first thing I wanna say is don't be too precious with the image you get from the AI. Um, these things should be sketches. And I think a lot of people get confused in this initial step because they see these images coming out of the AI and they're like, oh wow, these look really sweet. And they start painting on top of it or something and it, it looks worse initially. And that's kind of normal because it has this sort of uniform finish and it has a universal kind of texture and tone and all this color in it. And it gives the impression that it actually looks pretty good. But in reality, it, it kind of doesn't. It has, the, it has the basis for something really cool, but it doesn't actually have enough to make it a viable sketch. So treat these things pretty rough. Um, don't be too precious with them. Feel free to change things, move things. Um, treat this more like a rough photo bash sketch than you know a nearly finished piece that you're just kind of like tweaking. Um, you should be pretty free to change things. Um, so that's something I think uh, is really important for everybody. Um, the other thing that is super important just right off the get-go is coming up with good renders in the first place. And for this, I would just say to keep experimenting with different prompts, uh, different settings, uh, that sort of stuff, because there's a lot of nuance in there and very similar prompts are gonna give you wildly different images. Um, so just keep playing around, um, especially on mid-journey. Uh, I would browse through what other people are doing on the public um, forum there and see who's getting good images and who isn't. Um, that's where I picked up a lot of the tricks that I kind of figured out along the way um, is just by looking at people and seeing who's coming up with good images and who's not. Um, the biggest thing I think is when you're starting out, if you do want to use these for paintings, is to specify some artists. Um, just putting one or even multiple artist names in that description is enough that it's going to generate a much cooler image. Um, otherwise, you end up with these kind of weird sort of photographic, sort of like virtual reality, uncanny valley, just weirdness. Um, so go ahead and put an artist name in there. I found that Midjourney is just amazing at combining multiple artists. So I highly recommend playing with that. Um, I've loved just smashing together, you know, Frazetta and Mooka, and you get these like weird but cool images, um, crazy color palettes, all that kind of stuff. So I'd suggest doing that. Um, I found Disco Diffusion doesn't do as well with multiple artists, but I find I like how it handles individual artists even better. So um, play around with those things if you can, um, see what works for you. Um, one thing that I've found kind of across the board is it's extremely rare that these images have a very good sense of perspective. Um, they're often somewhat flat. Uh, they don't tend to have a lot of depth. And so in this particular one that's on the screen now with this tree, you see how I throw in a foreground um, pretty quickly in there because it just doesn't really have much sense of depth or scale. And so getting some solid perspective in these images is really important. And otherwise, they'll just kind of have this universal look that is always just kind of flat and ambiguous. 
and that's something you kind of want to work on um, to uh, to avoid. Um, if you are working into these things and painting into them, um, I mentioned before they start kind of start with this textural quality, lots of noise, lots of different colors. Um, I strongly suggest using really textural brushes for these. Um, if you use something that's a little bit too slick, it's really going to stand out. And sure, sometimes that might be okay, and sometimes that's even your purpose. Um, but I think you're going to have a much easier time if you really, really use um, some nice textural brushes. Uh, obviously, I'm a little bit biased, but I, I use my own, and I'll put a link to those uh, in the comments here. But um, yeah, if if you just have some good textural brushes on hand, uh, I'd suggest using those. It kind of goes without saying, but a lot of people wouldn't quite realize it, and they just dive in with you know a hard round brush, and all of their brush work is just going to look really out of place. And so I I thought it was at least worth mentioning. Um, Another interesting thing, and you see a lot of it in this image, is that especially Mid Journey, but to some degree Disco Diffusion as well, puts in lots of little weird random artifacts everywhere. Uh, there's lots of these like bright and dark noises, almost like dots of light all over the place. And they look cool enough, and I think they're probably one of the things that's making these images look complete without actually being complete. Um, but they're not really what you want in your final image. They're, they're going to give it that look that it is in AI images, and it's not going to look like a sketch that you made. So you are going to want to get rid of those. Um, just on a technical note, if, you, if you're working in like Photoshop, Clip Studio, something like that, make a new layer on top and either set it to a darken layer or a lighten layer and just kind of airbrush out all of those little specks. Um, and that'll take care of that kind of problem and immediately it'll start to look more like somebody painted it and less like, you know, somebody you know, sprayed some paint on it. So these little random artifacts are something you're going to want to get rid of um, as quickly as you can because I personally find they just, they just give away what you're, what you're doing. So uh, go ahead and work on that. Um, I think a really major thing and probably one of the bigger things you want to be doing and thinking about with this is recognizing what AI is great at right now and what it's terrible at. Because it is just incredibly good at some things and it's incredibly bad at other things. Um, figures, like obviously we just booted up a new figure piece here and the figures are terrible. Like they're not even close to right. Uh, I've seen a few people get some really basic figures that can look pretty good, but it is just, it, it feels like it's just a miracle if you happen to get lucky and have a figure that's even remotely correct uh, anatomically. Um, but it does a really good job of a lot of other things. It does an incredible job of color palettes, of implying uh, these wonderful lighting and color schemes. Uh, it, it just does a really, really good job. It's great at copying, uh, imitating styles, and even combining styles. Uh, that can be, that alone can just be really fun. Um, it's great for suggesting various shape languages, um, not only just, you know, copying from artists and stuff that you're putting in there, but also just inventing these really crazy, uh, awesome shapes. And that for me is really inspiring. And it's one of the great things that I love about it is that you, you see these things in these renders and if you actually look at it, they, they make no sense whatsoever, but they're often kind of implying something. And it's something I mentioned in the, the other video, the creator's chat video, that um, it's like looking at clouds and picking out you know animals in the clouds and just imagining these things. And that's kind of how I treat these sketches, is I'm looking at these things and I know they don't make sense, but I can immediately imagine something that's kind of close to that and I start to paint and change things such that it starts to look like that thing that I'm imagining. And that alone is just, it's just a really fun sketching process. Um, I think these tools are incredibly powerful and I've just been amazed at uh, not only how fun it is to work this way, it's very refreshing, it's very new, um, but it's also just really, really powerful. Uh, I think you could generate a tremendous quantity and quality of work um, very fast. Uh, it just, it speeds up so many things and it gives you so many options. Uh, nowadays I can leave uh, Disco Diffusion running overnight and I wake up to, you know, a hundred new images. And sure, a lot of those are 
garbage, but still it's probably going to give me 20 good images that I think I could easily sketch over and come up with a good painting from. And the sheer quantity there is, is just astonishing. It just gives you so much and so much like really good stuff that, um, yeah, it's just, it's incredible how much you can do with it and just the amount of work that can come out of it. So I'm really excited for this for artists. I think it's a really powerful thing and um, I'm, I'm really excited for what it does for artists and the art world. Uh, I talk a lot about it in the creators chat video we did, but I'm actually not that scared of this. Um, I know a lot of people are worried that, you know, concept artists are going to go away as a career and stuff like that. And sure, it's probably going to change things, but I don't think it's going to destroy the entire field. Um, I think it's going to really just enhance a lot of artists productivity and make more things possible for those artists. But I don't think it, it eliminates the need to learn good fundamental skills or, you know, work on your skills or even see a future in art. I think there's, there's still going to be a lot of room for artists to probably end up using these tools as part of that process. And I think it's just, it's going to do amazing things for concept artists because now an individual concept artist can just churn out way more ideas uh, with the help of these tools. And it's not, you know, quite as scary as people make it out to be. At least, at least I don't think it is. For all I know, I could be absolutely dead wrong. And this just demolishes the art field in a few years. But I certainly hope not, because I still love painting and they, I still think there's going to be room for artists. But who knows? Um, so moving on, uh, I think another thing that you might consider, and we've played a little bit with this, is is the fact that most of these AI renders are really, really low resolution. They're, they're incredibly pixelated when they come out and doing anything even like slightly okay resolution will just destroy your computer. Um, but there is, uh, because AI is wonderful, there's also AI upscalers. And sometimes you can find some AI upscalers that are focused more on paintings and a little bit less on photographs. And they can actually do a pretty good job um, depending on the image uh, of upscaling these things and actually keeping some of the qualities in there and giving you a slightly higher resolution image to start with. Um, even managing to you know 2x or 3x the size of these things is enough to get you a decent resolution for a sketch. Um, it's not you know enough for a finished quality, but honestly for concept artists it doesn't matter that much. Um, but a little bit higher resolution is kind of nicer to paint on you know, even when you're dealing with a sketch. Uh, I didn't actually use any AI upscalers for the for the sketches I'm showing you here. These were all just thrown in uh, Clip Studio Paint, and I believe I did like 8x the size, so I shifted it from like an 8 or 900 pixel image to I think something like a 6,000 pixel image, which is just a, a nice comfortable size um, to work on. Um, and for anyone interested in the high resolution files and seeing a little bit more of my process, seeing some of the the straight up renders and seeing my prompts and stuff like that. Uh, I am going to put together a little package of all that kind of stuff, bundle it up and I'll sell it for just a few bucks. Um, just in case you're interested in supporting me and uh, interested in learning a little bit more of the nitty gritty of how exactly I came up with these zooming in and really looking at some of this stuff. Um, I'm going to make that available for people. So if you're interested, um, go for it. Uh, obviously zero pressure, but um, I do always, I always appreciate it. So. Um, another technique that I haven't really done much of, but I've loved seeing other people do is actually combining multiple renders. So, you know, you start, you know, with one subject matter and you realize that, Hey, you need this cool hat or something like that. I, I'm only saying that because the sketch on the screen right now has a hat. Uh, you could actually go back into the AI, um, and put a prompt for some sort of hat design and then photo bash that back in there. And you can kind of keep doing that and keep coming up with new elements and just continually bash these things together. And I think that's probably going to be a really, really good technique. And you can probably get some really cool results with this. Uh, it's a bit like photo bashing. It's just that rather than sitting on Google, finding images, uh, it's, you actually get to type in some of the ideas of exactly what you have in mind. And obviously the stuff that comes out of this isn't isn't usually or really ever 
the exact thing you have in mind. But often I find that it's sparking new ideas for me. It's things that I wouldn't necessarily think of or styles that I wouldn't necessarily paint in. And that I think is, is a really incredible thing about this whole thing. Um, like I love putting in um, these, these prompts uh, using artist styles that aren't necessarily mine. Like, yeah, for a lot of these, I actually did put in Noah Bradley into the, into the AI generator. But I really love um, playing with putting in other artist names and putting in mixes of artists and starting with this base that's in a style that is not at all mine. Uh, it's an entirely different approach than I would normally take for these images. And then, and then working into it to start to put some of my style and my uh, flair for, for what that's worth uh, into these images. And I think that is just, it's a really fun process. Uh, even if you have no intention of using AI long term, which I think is totally fine, I still think it's it's a lot of fun. And if you're interested in trying new things like like I am, uh, I'd highly encourage you to figure out how to do this stuff, get it installed or join the beta or whatever it is, and try some of this stuff out. Um, I think you'll have a lot of fun. Uh, I've had an absolute blast with it, and uh, I'm I'm really excited to see what what it does for art. And I'm personally excited to see what it does for my own art. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, sketching has always been a lot of fun for me, so it's not like I've ever suffered to sketch. Uh, I've always loved the ideation phase. I've loved the sketching process. And for me, this is just a tool that makes it even, even easier and faster sometimes. Not for everything. There's obviously gonna be times when I'm clearly not going to use this, uh, times when it's, it's not going to be able to generate the exact image I have in mind, so I'm just going to do it myself. But there is times when there are, you know, there's images that I want to create, and this is just going to make it so much easier and faster and better uh, to create those images. And I think that's a really good thing for artists. Uh, I think, you know, if we can get the, you know, great art artist in the world uh, to be able to produce even more work, uh, I think that's a good thing. Um, I'd love to see even more paintings from the artists that I really love. And uh, I think we kind of all would. And obviously that's gonna create a lot more art in the world, but I think there's probably room for that. Uh, there's a lot more art these days than there was you know, 10, 20 years ago. Uh, the art world is totally different than when I started a decade ago. It's, it's wild to see just how much it's exploded. But at the same time, it's also incredible how much the demand for that really good art has grown. Uh, I see so many of these artists with these giant fan bases uh, that are supporting them and they get to live this life that they love. And I'm really encouraged by that. And I, I kind of think that some of this stuff might uh, encourage more of that to happen. Um, I also love that stuff like this is going to make it more accessible for more people to make art. And I love art and I love getting other people to make art. And I love just sharing that passion with other people. And I'm really hopeful that this isn't going to encourage more and more people to draw. Um, so if you're scared at all about this stuff and worried that it's going to take over and destroy the art world, uh, please take this as at least one word of encouragement that I don't think it's going to go that way. And I think things are great and keep studying your fundamentals, keep working on art. Uh, art is an amazing thing and I don't think it's going to stop being amazing. So, uh, Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, and if you have any questions, just let me know. If you have any technical questions on how to install that stuff, I'm probably not the guy to ask because I have no idea. But, uh, you know, any other questions, uh, I'm always happy to help. So thanks again. Uh, I hope you got something out of this and uh, I'll see you next time.